Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our service on this, the third Sunday of the Advent season, on this Sunday, December 12th, 2021. In this moment, God has come into our midst. God comes baptizing with the Holy Spirit and with fire so that we may be made ready to produce good fruits for God's world. Several announcements this morning, including a reminder that we continue to collect for God's Global Barnyard. This is a project of our Sunday School, which we've all been invited to help support. You can support that um, program, which is, um, enables us to purchase farm animals that are then provided to farmers and others in developing countries so that they can try to, to make a living. Um, with the products and the animal itself. Um, that collection will be ongoing until Sunday, January 9th. You can either write a check out to the church and then put on the mem memo line, Global Barnyard, or you can pick up, uh, I'm not sure where they are at this point since we uh, set up a fellowship in between the services, but there, there are um, coin boxes somewhere in the back there. We'll try to get them out um, for you, that you can take home and fill them with your change. Also remind you, our special offering for the month of December is for our, our partner, the Northeastern Pennsylvania Synod. The Reading Philharmonic will be here this Friday night at 7 p.m. They are asking kindly that everyone who attends the concert would please wear a mask. We've made it um, easy for you to pick up your envelopes if you haven't already. As you saw, maybe when you came in, they're right out in front of you as you leave the sanctuary this morning. Please pick yours up if you haven't already. And if you see a neighbor or a friends there that you can deliver for us, we would appreciate you taking those as well. A reminder, or maybe news for you, that on Sundays, December 26th, it's the Sunday after Christmas, and January 2nd, Sunday after New Year's, we will have one service only at 9.30 a.m. So make a mental note or jot that down at 9.30 on those two Sundays. Our Christmas Eve services are at 3 o'clock and at 7 o'clock. Both will be here in the sanctuary as well as live streamed on Facebook and YouTube. And um, we will also broadcast to the parking lot. Let us rise for the confession and forgiveness. <clears throat> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who alone does wonders, who lifts up the lowly, who fills the hungry with good things. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the tender mercy of our God. God for whom we wait, in the presence of one another, we confess our sin before you. We fail in believing that your good news is for us. We falter in our call to tend your creation. We find our sense of self in material wealth. We fear those different from ourselves. We forget that we are your children and turn away from your love. Forgive us, blessed one, and assure us again of your saving grace. Amen. God in Christ Jesus has looked with favor upon you. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, your sins are forgiven. You are children of the Most High, inheritors of the eternal promise and recipients of divine mercy. God strengthens you anew to follow the way of peace. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I invite you all to share a sign of God's peace.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stir up the wills of your faithful people, Lord God, and open our ears to the preaching of John, that rejoicing in your salvation, we may bring forth the fruits of repentance through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. We praise you, O God, for this victory wreath that marks our days of preparation for Christ's advent. As we light the candles on this wreath, strengthen our hearts as we await the Lord's coming in glory. Enlighten us with your grace that we may serve our neighbors in need. Grant this through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain and whose day draws near. Amen. Amen. Let's be the God of Israel who saves and sets us free. The first reading is from the third chapter of Zephaniah. Sing aloud, O daughter Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exult over you with loud singing as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time, and I will save the lame and gather the outcast, and I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time I will bring you home, at the time when I gather you, for I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth, when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. Word of God, word of life. The second reading is from the fourth chapter of Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel for the third Sunday 
in Advent is told according to Luke, the third chapter. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees, so that every tree that does not produce good fruits will be cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked John, what then should we do? John answered them, saying, whoever has two shirts must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors were coming to John to be baptized, and they asked, what should we do? John said to them, collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. And soldiers also came, saying, and we, what should we do? John said to them, do not extort money from people by threats or false accusations and be satisfied with your wages. As all the people were filled with expectation and were wondering in their hearts concerning John whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them, saying, I baptize you with water, but one more powerful than I is coming. I am not even worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hands to clear the threshing floor, and he will gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. With these and many other exhortations, John proclaimed the good news to the people, the gospel of the Lord. Congregation may sit down, and I invite the children to please come forward. Good morning, guys. I have this present that I'm going to open. I have to put the mic down to open it because I hold two hands. I have to let go. Yum. Yum. It's donuts. I love donuts. And it's soon lunchtime and I'm getting hungry. So I'm going to help myself to a donut. Well, that's kind of a bummer. There's nothing in there. There's a crumb, but a crumb's not going to help me hold me over till lunch. Huh. Well, whoever left this gift up here for me certainly wasn't very kind in giving me an empty box. And sometimes people can be like that too. We get to know someone and we think they're kind at first. And as we spend more time with them, they're maybe not as kind as we thought. And they're kind of like that empty box. They're kind of empty inside. In today's gospel, a man named John the Baptist was, and like Pastor Tom just read, was preparing the people for Jesus' coming. And the people asked John the Baptist lots of questions, like, do I just have to be baptized? What do I have to do? And John the Baptist tells him, well, yeah, you need to be baptized, but you need to do more than that. You need to be honest. You need to share your things. You shouldn't cheat. And that's what kind of this box represents here today. We can 
need to be that, do that same thing today. We need to, even though we come to church on a Sunday morning, if we leave here on a Sunday, we go home, have lunch, and we start fighting with our brothers and our sisters, with our good friends, that's not being a good Christian, is it? We need to be kind. We need to be honest. If you go to school tomorrow and you decide, like, oh, I didn't really do my homework, so I'm just going to borrow Katie's homework, and I'm just going to quick copy it down so that my teacher thinks I did my homework. That's not being a good student. That's not being honest. And we need, even no matter what, we need to be showing that we are a good Christian all the time, not just when we walk in here on a Sunday morning to go to church or Sunday school or whatever you're here for. We need to be a good Christian, not just on Sundays when we show up for church, but every day of the week. So my challenge for you this week is that you act like God all week long, not just today while you're here at church, and that you're full inside with and acting like a Christian should act at church and doing all the good things you should be doing. Don't act like this empty box and just, ooh, um, don't act like the empty box and only act like a Christian when you feel like it. You should always act like a Christian no matter what. Now, we do all make mistakes, and I know that. Come on, I live with two of these people. I know that they don't get along 100% of the time. But when you do make a mistake, all you need to do is say a short prayer to God, asking for forgiveness, and get, then get yourself right back on track. So that's my challenge for you this week, is that you act like a full box and be full of, be a full Christian, not just a, I'm going to come to church on Sunday and then forget about what I learned. Okay? Empty box. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? These are the kinds of gospel readings that pastors stress out over as we're preparing sermons for that particular week. As one parishioner way back in the beginning of my ministry said to me, Pastor, if my toes don't get stepped on during the sermon, it's not a good sermon. Now she, her name was Hazel, knew and understood how sermons can function. You see, as preachers, we stand on a fine line between proclaiming the good news, giving you reason for hope and joy, consoling you when your hearts are empty or grieving, but at the same time, striking that prophetic tone, that word of warning or awakening or of revelation about something that makes you say, hmm, aha, Something that makes your toes sting. For John today, all these people had come out into the wilderness, into the Jordan River, because they were seeking hope and consolation with John. But they're first hit by these stinging words, brood of vipers, calling them poisonous, mean, nasty snakes. John's purpose is to first get the people to be aware and to wake up to the fact that what he has to say and the one who will follow him are going to reveal a totally different understanding of the God they thought they had known, the God they had known through their tradition. And when he especially calls out those who claim ancestry with Abraham, the founder of the faith. 
What he's saying is no one had special privilege before God. You or I can't say, because my family have been longtime members of the church, I have special privilege before God. Or you can't say, because I'm a Lutheran, I have more privilege than a UCC or a Methodist. We can't even say, because we're Christians in America, that we have some special status with God. For even among all the Jews, the people God had chosen and loved and persisted with, there was no special favor among Pharisees or, or peasants, among kings or farmers. John's message was first of all one to expose this sense of privilege that no one could get off track with God by saying, I have Abraham as my ancestor or Luther as my inspiration. There was a new relationship being developed and it went beyond just as Carol said, showing up at church or worshiping, following all the hymns and all the liturgy. In this moment, on this Sunday, as we grow ever nearer to the coming of Christ, don't be surprised if you're feeling like your toes are getting stepped on. Because like the crowds that fled to John, coming here, facing God, are good things. John's message is one that, first of all, tells us to face God, to apologize, and then to go and do something good. Now, as I said to the early service, don't Picture this in your mind, but as I was thinking about the sermon this week and preparing, the image I had of me personally facing God was that I was standing buck naked before God, just like he created me. Because it's when I'm naked that I feel the most vulnerable, don't you? It's when I'm the most self-conscious aren't you? It is then that I realize the power of God to take away my shame, to allow me to be vulnerable in his presence, to remove and wash away my sin. So first of all, to face God. Second, then to apologize to God. In the Bible, we use the word repentance, which simply means to turn back. Picture yourself having turned away from God, and you turn back to face God. A lot of us run away from things from our past <clears throat> that we're embarrassed about. Or we feel, you know, we don't want people to know. But God knows. And we don't have to fear facing God face on with all our warts and bumps and scars and bruises. God already knows this and simply wants to know that we are aware of our human condition and our sin. The third is to then go. To go and do something good for Christ's sake. What, it, what John the Baptist has announced in this reading this morning is that a, the beginning of a new relationship with God has begun for us in this moment. Maybe it's a different way of understanding God. Maybe it's a different way of seeing how God is working in someone that we weren't sure in the past were really, could really be a messenger of Christ. 
Maybe it's a new way of relating to a spouse or to an alienated family member or to a stranger or to someone on the street. Because John comes in this moment to baptize us with the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit is the power that stirs up within us our awareness of who we are before God, our need to trust entirely in God, and our ability in Christ to do some very good things. So like the crowd, we may ask, so what should we do? John makes it sound very simple. First of all, we strive to share our abundance with anyone who has less of it. John talks about coats. If you have a coat to share, give it to someone who doesn't. You have a shirt to share, give it to someone who doesn't. If you have food to share, give it to someone who doesn't have enough. He even gives the tax collector something good to do. Now, you know, tax collectors in John's time were nasty people. You know, they weren't like our local tax collectors who we hope bill us fairly for our taxes. These were scheming, evil people who always sought to get more out of people than what they owed. But John says simply, with a new relationship with God, all you have to do is be fair to the people from whom you collect the taxes. The soldiers just by their uniforms and their, you know, their mighty look, their, their better than, than thou look, scared people into paying the soldiers monies that the, weren't owed to them. But they threatened, and they would make false accusations threatening to put people in prison. John says to them, give it up. You have your wages. Be satisfied and treat people with dignity. We have done so many things in this past year in the midst of pandemic, collecting a whole bunch of food for our food banks in Fleetwood and Kutztown. We collected a zillion socks for the homeless in Reading. We've collected or brought together Christmas gifts for children who are orphaned and don't have a family except in the homes that they live, in the, in the uh, like Bethany, children's home. And now we have the barnyard where we can actually supply someone, an animal that will be a long-term help to them economically, to feed their family, to make a little bit of money selling the animal's product. These are the things that John calls us to do. It's simple. Face the truth with God about you. Be sorry for it from the bottom of your heart. Not ashamed, not guilty, but sorry to a God you know will forgive you and probably already has. And then, without the burden of shame and guilt and sin, go and do something very good. Amen.
let us affirm our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite everyone who is able to please kneel for the prayer. Let us pray for peace between nations and peace between peoples. We bring our prayer to you. Good and gracious God, hear our prayer. Let us pray for peace in our homes and peace in our communities. We bring our prayer to you. Good and gracious God, hear our prayer. Let us pray for prophets of justice and reconciliation. We bring our prayer to you. Good and gracious God, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those We bring our prayer to you, good and gracious God, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who endure injustice and discrimination. We bring our prayer to you, good and gracious God, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who suffer violence and hatred. We bring our prayer to you, good and gracious God, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who proclaim your reign through word and in the arts. We bring our prayer to you. Good and gracious God, hear our prayer. Congregation may be seated.
Let us pray. God of our waiting and watching, we offer the gifts of our hearts and our lives to the service of all your people. Prepare the way before us as we meet you in this simple meal through Christ Jesus, our pathway and our peace. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink or all to eat, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to all of them, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered together in Christ's name, let us pray the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come to Christ's banquet. Feast on God's gift of grace. Because the body of Christ is given for you and the blood of Christ is shed for you. The congregation may be seated and those communing in the pews may commune at this time.
Please rise. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. Amen. Most high God, you have come among us at this table. By the Spirit's power, form us to be bearers of your word, sharing gifts of mercy and grace with all, through Christ Jesus, our host and our guest. Amen. 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 Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and evermore. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is near.